go. So, so I hear that you have a uh, a uh, a message to share with us this morning, Valerie. <laughs> well, I was just writing about timelines. Um, yeah, timelines are coming in this morning. I've written many times about them, but I really felt like, well, maybe people want to understand what's actually happening and to get more clarity about what a timeline actually is, because. <laughs> I felt like right before the 22nd, we actually had a reversal in time. I was in Las Vegas. And so a couple days over the weekend, I felt time was backing up because it, it felt like a day was, you know, like seven days crammed into one. So yeah. I can tell because I work a lot with timelines, time codes. So I can feel the energy and the frequency of what's going on. And then it kind of went the other direction and we shot into 12 or to 222. So, so yeah, I just posted about that because a lot of people are in different stages. And so my post is, you're not dying, you're going through grand initiation. One that has tested every aspect of your soul through multiple, multiple dimensions, timelines and avatars. Your presence here is a gift to humanity. And timelines are really groups of information because the, we, of course, are in linear time in 3D, but uh, timelines work differently. They're outside of linear time. So I see a lot of people talk about, um, you know, different realities. And so timelines are important to understand because they allow us to process so somebody will be connected with a group of information or group of people from a timeline. And then those people will come back around again if there's something to be done in that group of information. So we were talking earlier about collective timelines. We're in a big collective update right now. So collectively, there's a big movement because we have done so much work, because we have processed so much. So that's what's coming in this morning. <laughs> Hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that and it definitely resonates with me and I see and understand and I can really see the, uh, I can see how this is taking place in the physical. Yeah. Uh, so talking about like timelines and multiple timelines and everything, mm -hmm. uh, I know I've seen like a couple of videos and I heard about it. Uh, doesn't doesn't that have something to do with things like deja vu and the Mandela effect as well? Yes, which I, I also had this morning. I had some interesting matrix pieces show up. But, you know, timelines are fluid because they shift based on the collective shift and other variables. Um, Mandela is definitely timeline related. And so I know people talk about that a lot. <laughs> Um, so it's really just about understanding, you know, I call them points of light, which is frequencies, frequencies of possibilities, right? Like you said, Mandela. So Mandela is, oh, everything on this timeline is this way. And it could be very subtle. Like right now, I feel like we've got three timelines. We tend to have two or three running. And then at one point, they'll all converge and we'll have like the highest timeline. And then it's like, okay, we go through another cycle. And that's why you see things repeating, why you see patterns coming and going. And I call them loops because that's what's happening in the subconscious of individuals and also of, you know, of our, of our collective experience. We're collectively writing and rewriting in the Akashic records. So it's possibilities, dimensional realities, agreed upon constructs. Um, collapsible architecture that encompasses our 3D reality. Time is an illusion. Okay, and, you said, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so you said the Akashic Records. Um, yeah. For those out there that aren't aware of what the Akashic Records are, what is the Akashic Records? So Akashic Records uh, basically are a recording of everything. Um, Akashic means ether, and it's recording of all things in our 
human experience, um, in our planetary experiences, everything has a record. And so it's an energetic record of you. So right now you've got your own record. Um, there's pieces that you might be re, you know, re, um, encoding i like to use the word but it's just records and so i've been working in the records for many years in this incarnation and also had some remembrance of records from the past um yeah there's something i'm hearing a there's something in my mic yeah there's some i can hear all that by the way <laughs> oh yeah it's in it's in it. Oh, is it? Oh my God. I think you have a really good microphone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a really good microphone. Oh my God, I can hear everything. <laughs> okay, sorry. Funny. Hope we can cut this out. <laughs> oh yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's happening? Yeah, it, it's a really good mic. Oh my God. Yeah, my <laughs> I can hear a pin drop. Um <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Should I start over in my Akashic explanation? Um, no. I have light language. <laughs> so, I, I, I think I think we're pretty good on I think we're pretty good on the Akashic part. Okay. I have light language wants to come in. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I just want to finish though on my second though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Coffee yeah, I'm coffee. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I was like, what's going on? I didn't know if it was. <laughs> I did want to finish on timelines because um, to, right, because <coughs> the, the linear time being an illusion and then what that represents. I think it helps people understand better because it's, right, I if there's. What? What? No, I turned it off. It's fine. I'm sorry. I'll just mute my. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. So if I continue um, on, on, I want to talk about it only because if you understand, if an individual understands time as an illusion, it allows them to understand, oh, I'm processing this data, right? Let's say it's family. I'm processing this amount of information. But if they get so deep into it, it's, you know, if they if they're getting dragged down by it, if they understand that time is an illusion, so it's not about something taking time, it's about an alignment. So the minute you come into an alignment with whatever it is you're working on, whatever frequency you're trying to, you know, move beyond or whatever you're trying to process in the subconscious, then everything drops in. It's an automatic drop, right? I've seen this so many times. It's almost like a I can't hear you because your mic's muted. <laughs> so if you're talking to me. I'll just say, uh, so <laughs> when you're saying uh, alignment, you're saying like aligning your own personal energy to that timeline? Yeah, when, when I say alignment, it's frequency. Everything is frequency. We all know that, right? But how do we actually, what is the implementation of that? <laughs> it's day-to-day -day implementation. A frequency is this is an alignment with the frequency this is not this is an alignment because when it's in alignment it's flows right we're talking about flow state well what's flow state it's when you're in complete syntropy you're in complete and total alignment the balance the harmony there's nothing that's going to pull you down or pull you out that's when you know that it, you're in the right alignment and so many of us who work in the field i can see many things because I work in the Akashic records and I work multidimensionally. So I have ability to see. And so I can feel when something's gonna go out of alignment. I get kind of that advance, right? This is when my intuitive and my body and everything starts to give me a sign. Like, oh, that's, that's going this direction. But it can change, it's a daily thing or an hourly thing. <laughs> Especially when we're processing, like we just went through this 222 uh, gateway, it's a, it's a lot of energy that came in. So as I said before, time is an illusion. So we create these packages or scenarios to run through, right? Not to remember, well, not really to learn rather, but to remember 
or to relearn or remember. And so, and when we, as we return to our heritage, and, and I was speaking about guardians of Gaia, founders of the galaxy, when we recognize who we are, right, on a soul level, what aspects we're actually aligning. <laughs> exactly. So for me, it's how many aspects have you uncovered? And in those aspects, how much, how much stuff <laughs> have you also been able to recognize? You know, when you open a timeline, let's say Egypt, sure, it's great. We were all kings and queens. But then all the crap comes with it and all the, the trauma and all the misalignment and all the, uh, you know, the shadow and uh, all of that comes with it, which many of us have had to um, handle, so to speak. And we get to replay and we get to redo because that's re, um, that's updating the Akashic record. So a lot of, that's been a lot of my work since 2012 is going into these timelines and, and actually, you know, in the scenario, in this, in this, uh, in my own day-to-day -day 3D stuff, relationships, having to re-encode, do it differently, say something different, react differently. That's how you re-encode the record. And so collectively, we're getting chances to re-encode the record. We're getting chances to rise. These are all opportunities for us as a group to say, which timeline are we choosing? Are we choosing this old war stuff? You know, <laughs> we choosing these old scenarios as a group, as a group, or are we choosing peace? Are we choosing life? Are we choosing, why don't we have a big peace rally in Russia? I mean, look at how big that country is. We could all fit in it. I say the entire world get to Russia and let's have a big peace. I'm for that. I would, I would go. Yeah, absolutely. Like those are the responses we need to this kind of shenanigans. We really do. I know. We like really. how big is, let's go. We could all fit. It's like Australia. It's like, we could all fit on Australia. Landmass. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Did that make sense? Cause that's my timeline discussion that yeah, yeah, yeah. That make that make okay. a lot of sense to me oh, at least. Um, and I I do feel like you did put it into pretty simple terms for others to at least have a beginning or understand. Ooh, wow, <laughs> a uh, beginning understanding of it because it's pretty it's pretty advanced knowledge. It's not gonna be like you hear about it one time you know everything. Um, yeah. But what I was gonna say was. timelines um i just like completely forgot that's crazy well <laughs> <laughs> what i was gonna say just just to maybe while you're remembering is if that's you've so seen funny. the latest matrix you understand what a timeline is did yeah, you yeah. see the last matrix yeah i watched i definitely watched the last okay. matrix so that is a very good visual representation of timelines, right? Yeah. They meet in another timeline and you look familiar, you look familiar, right? That you could use that as in that essence, that's what a timeline is. Because that's what happens now, right? Like, oh, you, you're familiar. Oh, you're from Egypt. Okay, so am I. And we, I mean, we, we do that now. That's how my 2012 started. Some guy showed up in Facebook. And I'm like, oh, I know you. You seem familiar. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we did this and this and we're connected in all these ways. Oh, what are we doing now? We have work to do. So it's really is like that matrix, that last matrix. Um, it's a good, it's a good, like, oh, I'm going back to sleep, right? I'm in 3D, I'm sleeping. And then you wake up on the other side and that's what you're really doing here. So it just, you know, we've been in a big amnesia for, for a reason, and we've all been coming out of that amnesia individually and hopefully collectively we're coming out of that, but that we're only gonna come out of it if we get scenarios that make us go, wait, we don't want war, wait a minute. We're not like, that's not who we are anymore. <laughs> so. Yeah.
that's a lot that's a lot to process right there yeah i have a lot <laughs> wow <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but i've um i've, I've definitely dove into timeline and stuff for the last few years a little bit and yeah. oh what i was going to ask you earlier was something i've noticed is you're talking about like opportunities for like old things to be repaired or like make something new with the old uh, yes so it's kind of interesting i've had a lot of my past female partners uh messaging me and i mean they haven't messaged me in years and yeah. they just messaged me out of the blue they're just like catching up real quick and, hey. like, it was awesome. <laughs> it's all it's weird it's like it's like we never left the love's still there yeah but Cause you didn't. But then you know. <laughs> but then they're like, you know, there's still current life circumstances because of going part ways and all that stuff. So, do you feel like that coming up in my life and other people's lives, it relates to that? Very much, because you're still in those relationships, whether or not you're physically involved, right? Yeah there's still a thread and you know people talk about cutting cords and i laugh because cutting cords doesn't mean anything if you have a, a connection if you have a soul connection an akashic contract so i'll say i have to look in the i have to look in your record and see what have you agreed to what are the contracts you have with this person um and that's another thing, you know, we're all beloveds, right? We're all, we all, if you look at it from a, a, that standpoint, we're all beloveds. So mm. what the, the nature of the, the, of the relationship can change, but the love is still there. You know, I've said that to my son when I separated from his father, I'm like, I still love your dad. It's just the relationships changed. You know, I, I we're not in a, we're not in a romantic partnership, but we're could now we're switching into co-parenting, you know, but there's still love there. So I think it's just a re, um, you know, it's just a re, a, a reframe. I like to use that word reframe with my clients. If you can reframe things, it really helps because the brain's trying to figure stuff out, right? That's what 3D is. The brain searching for answers and so if you right. can do a reframe on things that are happening for you know older people past people popping up because your energy has changed if you want a relationship and then you're moving out of a relationship right that's tr your energy has opened and so if you're connected to them they're going to feel that And you might have yeah, stuff to do with them, right? Is it unresolved? Did it's everything resolved? There might still be things to do with them. Maybe it's not a relationship romantic. Maybe it's something else, a different yeah. kind of relationship. So, you know, this is 3D is about relationships, right? It's always about managing, <laughs> managing those relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you for sharing that because that really puts things into perspective for me. Um, so now I want to kind of hop into some things with your background and your story. Uh, so it says here that sacred travel and ceremony since 2004. So since 2004, you've been holding uh, sacred travels and ceremonies? Um, not necessarily in 2004. I started um, working with clients. So I, it's my journey started in 2004. Uh, I had been in the software industry. So I came out of like a business background. I was in fashion. Then I went into software, internet. But I was always in business and marketing and sales. And then I had this, you know, awakening. My first awakening was 2004 with a Reiki class. So it kind of started through that avenue mm -hmm. uh, and then just built from there. 
And then I had my son and then 2011 came and I could feel, <laughs> excuse me, something was starting to open and that was 2012. So many, like many of us, that was kind of the bigger awakening. The two by four, I call mm. it. <laughs> the that two was, by four. Yeah, because I'm like getting married, had a little baby, you know, I'm like, la, 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 doing my work. And I was already, already very connected, intuitive. But then I got the man showed up. That was the two by four. Like, oh, crap. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> I have a bigger yeah. mission. Ah. So that, <laughs> that, excuse me, that was 2012. January 2012. The bigger mission came knocking on my door. You yeah, got more so, to do. You got more to do. So, Wake up. <laughs> so January 2012. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's when it started. You were uh, reconnecting and anchoring in certain energies such as Atlantean codes, mm -hmm. Galactic Council, uh, yep. receiving guidance from ascended masters yep. um so what were some like really key experiences and interactions that you were having during those time periods that were really standing out to you well that's gaia showed up january 2012 and i was like hey uh and i called i called alex is his name i called alex uh guy is here uh he's like oh perfect Let's go. We're ready. I go, ready for what? What the hell are we doing? So <laughs> that, was, that was the big like, oh, crap. And then everything started coming. And so Gaia, the Pleiadian Council, I had not had any galactic stuff prior. So I started to start, you know, I started receiving information. Uh, I started receiving messages that I would be receiving codes. And I'm like, what codes? Codes for what? So I started getting uh, ideas of things that were coming, but then it started to become clear. And so Pleiadian Council showed up um, and uh, the Atlantean showed up. I, I had a new guide come in in December, 2011. He didn't say anything. He didn't talk to me. And then when Alex showed up, he started talking. So all of this started weaving together, Alex, Pleiadian Council, Atlantis, who I was. And then I had all this remembrance. It literally flooded in about my time in Atlantis and who I was and what I'm doing and Alex and who he was. So that was a huge piece for me because it was overwhelming. I'll be honest. It was just like an onslaught of information and messages and sh people showing up and, oh, time for ceremony. Oh, what ceremony? So I was like, I was getting messages of things that I was about ready to do. I know I'm like, who's doing that? <laughs> so all the remembrance came oh in because I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to do a ceremony. And I just started and followed. I just followed what I was feeling. <laughs> and my guide was talking to Alex and I'm like, I have a message for you. And that hadn't happened before. So I had very specific things that had not happened before happen and so i knew mm -hmm. this is big because also how it felt it was so strong it that it was such a heavy magnetic i couldn't like i was i, I had to put valerie over here you know everything was moving through me but it was overwhelming my husband was like what the hell's happening to you you know <laughs> Uh, yeah, he was like, <laughs> "Where, where are you? You're not on this dimension." Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, it was I just major. Like, I, I just like feel the energy from that. I, it oh, gives yeah, me like I... such jitters. Oh yeah, jitters. <laughs> and, and it this... remind... <laughs> Oh, did you have a same it one? Remind... I was just gonna say it reminds me of a couple of experiences I've had where, um, you know, uh, the intergalactic beings just really, really like. Oh yeah. Really made herself known. It is just like, whoa, like you yeah. guys are just, I don't know. It gets you in this like jittery, kind of like giddy mood, because you're just like, oh yes, like they're here. Like they're here. I actually know hundred percent they're here. Yay! No, it was like it was just <laughs> it was like, let's drop something, <laughs> let's drop a five ton magnet on your head. And then yeah, everything so is gonna get come in. Yeah. So listen to this. 
uh, there was a there was a night that I was on, on plant medicine and oh. Oh. I was <laughs> And it was really interesting because, you know, and I was by myself, so I didn't have like a shaman or anything that oh. was doing it for me. Okay. So what had happened was I set up a crystal grid and I put the medicine in the middle of the grid on the floor. And, oh. you know, when I do these things, like set up a crystal grid, I fully channel it. I don't think about where I'm placing yeah. in the stones. Uh huh. Um, so... I placed the grid, put it in the middle of the grid, went and got some sage. And this was just complete guidance. Like I had no thought <laughs> of like what to do next or anything. Yeah. But um, grabbed some sage, just started like dancing and smudging, cleansing the crystal grid. Beautiful. And then just did a little oming and then took the plant <laughs> medicine. And it was just one of the most like most clear and pure journeys within myself that I've had on plant medicine. And it, it was so powerful. I remember I was standing and there was a huge download yeah. in my DNA due to the, the crystal of the plant medicine. Mm -hmm. And I literally just had felt the whole entire rush of my light just down into my crown throughout my whole aura. And it was one of the best feelings I've ever had in my life. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. Your aspect. So your, your aspect came in. <laughs> it's where, yeah. you know, these we were avatars. These are avatar, physical avatars mm -hmm. for the multidimensional pieces that we hold. And they come in when we're ready, when that, right. It's like, oh, phase two. Okay. Download, right. Your experiences. And, and so many of us have ha have had that, you know, i I'm older than you. I'm considered a way shower because I came in summer of 1967. And I was like, I came in on the rainbow, basically. That was like summer of love, you know, and I was in Orange County. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the time. I was Orange County. <laughs> I came in Orange County, summer of love, you know. So holding that blueprint in my family and growing up in Southern California and carrying that frequency of that rainbow you know and i've always had that so moving into different aspects of being a way shower while the right while the next generation came in and my awakening was over time but i had a very um unorthodox childhood with you know my father my parents left the church and got into v50 and s and warner Earhart and you know, it was mind over matter. I was doing that when I was 10. Like, so oh. I had training. I was trained, even though I don't know how aware they were. <laughs> we were training. So what is, what, what are these, uh, what are these organizations or groups that you're, you're naming? You said so, they left the church and joined. Yeah. So S Werner Earhart is what basically the forum is today. A lot of people go through the, um, what else is it called? It has another name. Do you know the forum? The forum? Yeah, there's another name for it. I can't, it's escaping me. But anyway, it's basically just teaching people how to create their own reality. And, Ooh. you know, yeah, it's like the original <laughs> in the 70s um thought you wow, know new thought is. movement oh yeah i mean my parents got into that and we were probably in one of the first children's est at that time my siblings and i and it was controlling your headache and you can control your body you tell your body what to do i mean so that's how i was brought up <laughs> in, in that environment i didn't have any religious dogma I had that uh, so I was always exposed my dad was very much about let's expose you to all these alternative things um, you know we used to get Seth speaks that was like a Christmas gift about you know this woman who channeled all this information <laughs> I think at like 15 I'm reading Seth speaks 
And then he's like, hey, everybody should meditate. And so I went through transcendental meditation when I was 18. So I had all of these different amazing, you know, non, not regular experiences um, growing up. And so I had that openness already. So I think that was a big part of just trusting myself. And I had that intuition, even though I wasn't in this field, um, I always had that intuition. I could zero in and I had memories of lighting candles, you know, as a witch or whatever, you know, this little blips would come through here and there, but it's not until I started the Reiki, I'd started the path, then everything opened up from there. So that was my opening into all of this other stuff. <laughs> mm. That's some deep stuff right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, I, my, and it's funny because my dad, I'd be like, um, he's like, you know, get out of the cosmos, you know, get down from the, I said, dad, you, this is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is you. <laughs> this is your training, and so he right. he would say something, and I I'd be like, "Remember transcendental meditation? None of this is real." He's like, he was laughing, so he's like, <laughs> <laughs> I threw it all back at him one time. Um, uh, that's so funny. <laughs> I know it was great. He's like, "Oh, okay," and so yeah, even now I say, "Remember your training," you know, because he's older. He's eighty three. But he'll be in this, he runs, he's running the fear stuff with the collective. And I said, remember your training. Like, this isn't real in the way that you're seeing it. You're being manipulated. Because mm. that's how, that's how people, that's how to move masses is manipulation in the emotional, right? That's how you get the masses to move or to believe or to not do things is emotional the fourth dimension is the emotion that's where the akashic records are oh wow <laughs> oh yeah so the fourth that's dimension the gateway yeah is, the fourth dimension is where the akashic records are located of course that's the emotional band L right. look at everything well, that's I happening where do people get stuck on this planet right well i will be sure to be right there in the fourth dimension <laughs> so mastery is about mastering that space mastering the emotional right if you can't master that it's very difficult to move into you know i'm going to use dimensional speak fifth dimensional unconditional love because you're going to get pulled back into fourth and third consistently because the two are very closely tied so i i say 3d is is do right 4D is feel and 5D is be, just being. But if okay. you, you can't do being if you still have tumultuous emotional feelings and if you're still getting pulled back into do, 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 which is third dimension is about physically moving, right? Doing, which is why we're uh, the, the doing part is going away. We're moving more into the feeling and the knowing and the being. And those that makes are, a lot of sense. Yeah. It makes sense why, like, you know, some of us, like myself, other star seeds and light workers, are kind of having this sense of like just going ahead and kind of drifting away from their normal job. Yeah, you can't and do it. I also get this feeling that it's more of like, um, because you're saying it's not going to be as much physical. It's it's like we're called to work from home more often. Uh, the yeah. star season light workers, and we find ourselves being at home more, connecting yeah. via these technologies. Yes. Or within homes with others. Exactly, because well, we're also in a completely different paradigm with technology that our you know, our ancestors or our parents, even that last generation, just, they didn't have it. I mean, my dad had an Apple IIe and that was like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. When I was in the 70s, when I was a kid, that was late 70s, early 80s. 
<laughs> not that long ago. <laughs> I mean, I used to play, you know, Dungeons and Dragons in in oh. in, in, in in speak. I had to say, pick up the knife. Okay, there was no visuals. It was literally text. You had to give text instructions. Oh my god! You, oh yeah, and it was like so exciting. You know, oh, pick bet. up the knife and <laughs> run. I know. I was like, what am I doing? Could you imagine? <laughs> How, you imagine? That's crazy. Yeah, crazy how, you imagine? <laughs> how far we've come. I don't think about that. So think about how and <laughs> it's why we're all it's why things are happening so quickly. It's why we're having such an advancement. It appears that time is moving so quickly because we are collapsing so much in such a short period of time. Right. And we're doing away with the unworkable permutations. What doesn't work as a collective was for an individual, you know, and it, we'd have to run all these scenarios. That's another timeline thing. Right. It's just like a movie. You get to run the scenario out. And so, like I ask, well, what are we willing to handle? What does everybody want to do? Do we want to still do the war stuff or we want to just do peace and fun stuff and get naked and eat fresh fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh-oh. The Zoom call is about to change. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all get naked and show up in Russia. I'm serious. <laughs> I'll read the fruit. Yeah, like, you know, that's when things change when those kind of you know when when we hold that field right i'm gonna hold that yeah, field exactly. this it's field a, right here the <laughs> cheek field it's the dimple field <laughs> i'm gonna hold the dimple field um so because everybody wants the same thing right it's just that if we've come from such a you know thousands of years of this generally oppressive <laughs> situation and so we get to work through, and these are the old, this is the, these are the old grids, the old infrastructure. Um, so it's some of what I hold because I carry a lot of the ancient blueprints. And so it's a lot of what I've had to work on, which is not for the faint of heart. Um, yeah. I've, I work a lot with star seeds, but I work a lot on the ancient grids. To be honest, I'm almost done. I feel like I've done that. I've done that work. <laughs> done. Mm -hmm. I've done my part in those grids. <laughs> What's um? So, what is grid work? Uh, grid work is a physical. Uh, well, not you don't have to physically be on the on the ground, but a lot of times you do, where you're taking your specific frequency and your codes, and going to a piece of land, and doing whatever needs to be done sometimes you're just to physically be there is important because i've said this we're walking ley lines you know we're, we're walking frequency generators uh, so we get moved around the world right a lot of us that's why you'll be suddenly like oh i have to move to zimbabwe you yeah know? i gotta go back to ohio <laughs> yeah exactly you have to go back to ohio which is funny because my friend just said, Ohio, I'm getting Ohio. And I said, what came to me instantly was the serpent, serpent mound. Oh yeah, serpent mound. Okay, and so I went and looked it up and found a map and it literally the map looked like the serpent looked like sperm and the mound looked like an egg. And I'm like, oh, this looks mm. like an ancient fertility site. That's what was coming. Oh man, I forgot about serpent mound. Yeah, you gotta go. I've been got to go. Okay. So I'll go again. yeah, because what I saw <laughs> in this ancient drawing was, oh, it's, this is a fertility. This is about fertility. And isn't that what we're doing right now? This is a primordial, right? We're because we're working in primordial grids. Those are the ancient grids. Yeah. And aren't we seeding, uh, right? Aren't we seeding what we want? In these fields that's a lot of what grid work is you're seeding <laughs> you're either updating seeding. yeah you're you're healing you're updating you're seeding 
you're negotiating. A lot of times I'll go yeah. in because I act as a mediator. I speak many different light languages, as you know. Mm. Um, so I will get pulled somewhere because Beautiful usually there's, language. oh, thank you. Some are a little rough. <laughs> some, some, <laughs> depends what I'm saying, when's what I'm doing or who it's about or what's happening, but. Um, <laughs> and so I'll go to the land and I've already done pre-work, right? I've already done work, but I physically go. It's just like in regular mediation. You do all the paperwork and then you show up and shake right. a hand or finalize things. So like my last grid work assignment was Kauai and I did a lot of pre-work and then I got the go ahead to go. And then I landed and the dragons came in and thanked me for coming. And so I land and then I just follow my intuition. I bring all my tools. I don't sometimes know specifically what I'm doing, what I'm gonna be mm -hmm. doing. I have an overview, but it just kind of unfolds as I get there. So staying yep. in the mystery of everything is so important, you know, and that's our, that's that zero point. And I say, I have a beloved coming in that I've been weaving with. He lives in Beirut. He's coming Monday. And I said to him, I have no expectations once you land. Cause I don't know, you know, we've been doing all these sorts of things long distance, but I have no idea what's supposed to happen when you get here. It could be a beloved thing. It could be something else. It's just being in that very neutral place without the attachment of, oh, it's going to be this. Oh, it's going to be that. Or it's got to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I've done this long enough. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I have some idea. But again, this is timelines, right? I have ideas. But it's not just me. It's also him. And so what's going to load even him coming, I got like one day he's not coming, the other day he's coming. Their timelines, because he's also negotiating a big field over where he is. That's very ancient, all that land over there. So, you know, and I tune into the land, say, is the land going to let you go? Because that's important, right? You'll get blocked from going somewhere if you're not, if it's not ready. Like I'm supposed to be in Maui. I've tried to go to Maui twice now. And I, I was going to be there a few weeks ago and I got, nope, not time. So, you know, I think a lot of us are used to being in the flow. Like you got to book a flight and then cancel the flight or make a plan and then cancel the plan. It's part of being in this kind of flow state because it, the energy, the alignment has to be there. I'm very tuned into that. If it's not a hundred percent, I'm not going, I won't go. It has to be a, a very, the flow has to be there. And so I can tell when something starts to break down, like, okay, for us, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> Something's happening. But I wait literally to the last minute. Like for Maui, I was two days prior. I just said, okay, am I going? Like, nope, don't go. Okay. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Yeah, I have, I've had a lot of, um, I have language for that. Know. Have you had the oh. same? Yeah, there's, I'm feeling something's coming in. It's a language. Do you want me to drop some language? Mm -hmm. Please. Okay. Um, Atama Besabushamohane <laughs> E kuku ala mart ama kiamani apata ela maku ala sahanjeta en sabachama el ela handa katama cho anchenda mayani dema noranda katama noranda apa utame naita e sakata uta pataiko taita 
<laughs> then my heart is expanding. It's coming through my heart. <laughs> You're muted, by the way. You felt that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I felt that specifically in my third eye and crown area. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So I feel. Everything's, I... everything's yeah. a lot brighter. Oh, good. Yeah. Frequency. A lot brighter. Good. I love about light language and uh, ah. being able to just tune in and quiet yourself and listen to the frequency and feel it you know yeah it's not about trying to figure out what it is or what it means it's just mm -hmm. just being with it allowing yeah. yourself to feel and just feel what it does for you yeah frequency you know i speak frequency is what i say and the language does many things it communicates directly into the you know the subconscious that bypasses the conscious so i'm speaking into your field the field right which is a lot of when i go on the land i'm speaking into that field whatever it is whatever need is needed so that's what land that grid work is whatever is needed right and i noticed mm -hmm. there'll be like a group of people will be traveling and doing grid work and then they'll stop and then another group of people will go in right so a lot of times the whole soul family will show up like Egypt is a prime example. It's like, oh, I'm going and I'm going, then she's going, then he's going, right? We're all, we're all going at different times, sometimes together um, because we're working on different pieces. We all carry different pieces to a puzzle, to a timeline because a lot of us are ancient. We have been here a long time in many different iterations and we carry that frequency with us so that knowledge um yeah <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so for so for those that are out there you know the average mind that just is not really um focusing or learning about these type of things in their everyday life because that is a huge percent of life out there um how would you really like how would you say that they could they could really get themselves introduced to you know like timelines the akashic record mm -hmm. their psychic abilities stuff like that where do they kind of go to start really um developing and becoming more aware of those yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I feel like, and you know, mentioned it earlier, a lot of people go through these plant ceremonies, even cannabis that opens up, you know, that um, a brain, a, a different, um, the theta, you know, the brain waves. So it's really what resonates with you. Some people do that, some people meditation. I really never did anything for me. It was just because I've been meditating since I was, you know, 18. Like I've kind of already had that orientation. So I just started listening to myself. So it's really anything that allows you to unplug, so to speak, from the mental framework, the mind, straight mind, which is meditation or anything, Reiki, any kind of modality, um, just being silent, you know, having that time for silent reflection. Um, and just understanding that there's more than this physical reality, because once you understand that, that you're not just the body, that can open up so much, because that means you're, oh, I'm going to look beyond the third dimension into the fourth. And then just follow your heart. You know, I say, follow your feel. So the more in tune with, the, with your body and with your senses, you know, I think like your generation and younger, my son's going to be 13 this year. I mean, you know, he's in gamer mode right now, but I know who he is as a soul. So I speak to him in language when I need to, since he was a baby, right? So I already know, and I work on him. I mean, I'll tune into his field when he comes and see what he needs. So I've been downloading stuff. <laughs> hey, that, that's beautiful work. Really it is. is. I mean, it's a, it honestly, <laughs> it's been a full-time job. Like, you know, and they told me he'll be in his full power when he's 10 years old. 
you know, and then you're going to shift from, or no, when he's 12 years old, when he was 10, they said, now you're, now you're not just mommy. You're going to be teacher, your mommy and teacher, mm -hmm. right? When he turned 10, he said he'll be in his full power when he's 12 and he's 12 right now, almost 13. He's still mm -hmm. in the, you know, he's still in public school. Like it's not time for him, but I also, um, it, the structure has to be here, right? The infrastructure had to be interrupted. The kids can't come in to, to run an old system. It doesn't work. So that's why what looks like destruction is needed. We have to break down this whole system for the next generation to come in and lead. That's what many of us have been preparing for. You know, I said, I'm doing the work for him. I'm the, this is for him. I'm breaking down all, a lot of the structures for him so he can step in when the time is right and lead. He's a leader. They've told me that from day one. He's a leader. <laughs> and he is. He's, he's a powerful being. You know, so it's thank like. You, uh, <laughs> I want to say thank you for uh, leading the way for oh. those, of you, those of us after you. You're welcome. You know, My I'm pleasure. one of those people that you led way for to be able to be myself and to not Yay. be afraid to to share my light and you know the gifts that I have from Aww. God or the Creator. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful. Thank you. Really. You're welcome. My pleasure. Yeah, like you and, know, um, it's. I was gonna say something corny. We're all in this together. It's true though. <laughs> <laughs> it's corny but it's true we're all connected and and the more you see that or feel that right because it's a feeling we're all part of this universal matrix and so you know i we're all we all are connected we're all pieces of the same uh we're all fractals we're all fractals of so source consciousness right we just decided mm -hmm. to be on this physical planet in these bodies in this space and time to do what's needed oh right. really are we yeah we are <laughs> <laughs> um so i just want to, to hop back a little bit in the timeline okay and <laughs> blurp, blurp. and um blurpity blurpity <laughs> go back to uh <laughs> trying to uh give some good ways for people to get introduced to this um, okay. So would you say that something helpful to be able to like start receiving this information and be able to peep into higher dimensions would be doing like a cleanse or a detox of your body and your energy? Yeah, I mean, uh, everything, you know. Do you think that would help open up? Oh, for sure. Yeah, the physical body is definitely a big part um you know i very much follow again intuition about what to eat and supplements i stay very organic and you know very clear on what i'm supposed to take and when um so that is a part of it because vibrationally as i said everything's vibration so what's your majority of what you're eating is it 80 percent high vibrational you know um, it does affect, and then what kind of job are you working at? And what, what are your emotional? Everything is emotional state. Where is your emotional state? Right? Because physical is affected by emotional. And mental is affected by emotional. So it, it's all emotional. It really yeah. is. It all boils down to your emotional body. That is the most important piece in all of this. Because that tells you where you're at. And that's reflected, right? In your physical it's reflected in all your different aspects. So the clearer you can be, you know, the pineal gland, right? The receiver, the clearer you are as a receiver. It's the fine tuning of, of your, all your bodies, all of the energetic bodies. So the clearer you are in the energetic bodies, it's going to affect your physical, emotional state. And the more that you'll be able to receive. Yeah. So like basically the more that you do like, you know, mental clearing and the more that you do emotional clearing and then the more that you do physical clearing, all yeah. these clearing will help open up your aura or 
your bodies to be able to further receive more of our light or our light codes, so to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And um, for me, I know meditation and consistent meditation has yes. been one of the biggest, if not the biggest life changers for me. Um, so yeah, that's I'm, a given a for sure. I made it a habit and into a routine to meditate every day. I mean, of course I've missed days, but for a large majority about say 80 to 90% of the time I do before I get out of bed, do around a 10, maybe 12 minute full balance chakra meditation on YouTube. Yeah, beautiful. Every morning before I start my day, before I get out of that bed, I balance and clear my chakras. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take long either. You know, these are short practices that can be done in 10, 15 minutes. So, I mean, everyone should be meditating in some way, shape or form, some mindfulness, something. For me, that's baseline. And then whatever else on top of that. Um, yep. And that can include right. just taking a walk in the morning. It could be just yeah. on the back, writing a poem. I mean, dishes even. Anything that really clears your mind and allows yeah. you to channel and stream your energy into something effective for a, exactly. a productive outcome. Yeah. Because remember, it's all brainwaves. So if you look at the brainwave states, right? What brainwave state are you in? And then what are you doing in that state? Because that's where, if you look at the waves, the waves give you an indication. That's how we process. So, you know, we're a mix of waves, brain waves and body stuff, which is the hormonal. You know, it's a matter of what, what does that all look like? Because like I said, we are part animal. Our DNA is part animal. So we're going to have those pieces, which is also what we've been moving out of with these DNA updates that we've been receiving. Mm -hmm. We've been upgraded our 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 you know avatars have been upgraded i talk about avatars new avatar bodies today so we're actually updating the avatars which is why some people are leaving the planet and some people are not because the body the physical body will start to entropy degrade if it's not receiving what it needs i mean that's what death is it's makes just a sense. degradation yeah well, that makes sense why um, here in this last like week or so, I've taken upon to fully start embodying, you know, the name and energy of Crystal Light rather than Marcus, because, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's upgrading time and it's, yeah. time to, it's time to really embody what we want to see on this planet and embody what we need to embody to be able to produce and manifest what we want to see. Embody, oh. embody, embody. <laughs> um, so Make I just want to, oh my God. <laughs> um, I just want to <laughs> ask real quick, what out of all of your uh, practices that you're certified in, what, which one is your favorite to practice? Uh, probably Akashic Field Therapy. <clears throat> I've been doing that since 2005. I love it. I and, love it. It's like my investigative, you know, side. I like digging. Why? I like digging in people's stuff. <laughs> I'm are, an archaeologist. So if I could ask you, um, you know, without sharing anybody's personalness. Yeah. What, what's like one of the most difficult experiences you've had looking in the Akashi? Uh, but you, I mean, there's a lot of traumatic experiences, but, but <laughs> there's, I think just again, bringing awareness to me personally, I mean, I've done a lot myself. Um, and also, uh, like, you know, finding out why, why something is happening. I mean, for me, that is such a powerful piece. What's happening in the subconscious, you know, what's happening in 3d and in, in the conscious awareness, why is this happening? To, to give someone a reason, you know, an actual subconscious understanding. I mean, that's such a powerful moment, you know, because 
we're just we just run so many patterns subconsciously and people suffer needlessly because of it so to illuminate the the why i think is so powerful and just sharing the information you know it it just some it shifts somebody's entire universe and so i love that for me that's so powerful because we all have that knowledge our ancestors were very connected to the akashic records and we've lost that right we we lost that we've we've been regaining it but that was lost over time we stopped connecting with the earth with the stars you know with with who we are that got lost somewhere in the doing right yeah do, it got, do, do, it got do. lost in the they got loose they got in the, the boots shoes and the skyscrapers every day yeah it got lost in the don't cry and just do your job you know and it got lost and that that's what we've been reviving this is the revitalization of that knowledge that who we really are and our abilities you know yeah. so I mean, that's part of the reason why yeah i'll say that's part of the reason why i felt you know i felt called to to walk out of my job walk away from my job was yeah. because it it was not representing a humane environment or a humane way of living and providing living yeah right so that new manager came in and he was just changed the frequency and it's like oh wait nope no it was really just a reminder work. for me it was really a reminder for me of yeah. you know where where that field's at and I'm, I'm glad i did what i did and i'm now here because now after all those experiences, being a leader of a store and everything, and um, you know, remembering who I am through those experiences, yeah. it pushed me forward to really move forward with this, and you know, start really putting back that energy that I was putting sixty to seventy hours a week into that corporate company, into myself and the community as a whole. Exactly. And you learned you had to go back into that environment because we learn by polarity. That's the only way we learn, right? I mean, yep. I've said that we're here to, excuse me, translate, transcend duality. So that's duality when you, when, you know, the dual nature of it's this or that, it's this or that, right? It's war or peace. No, it's not. It's just being. It's none of those. We just are. But yeah. that's how we've, this planet is run in duality. <laughs> I did the same thing. I went into corporate six months in a corporate contract. And I was like, oh my God, get me out of here. <laughs> it was yeah. great money. I, I took it because it was really good money, but I couldn't do it. I just was like, uh-uh, my brain hurt, you know, and not in a good way. It was, but, but it motivated me, it gave me the fuel to say, all right, I'm finally, I'm going to step up my game on this. Yeah, exactly. I do, right. I do not want that. It's the old, you know, Hicks. <laughs> no. So you get it for reflection of no, thank you. I want this, right. That's the pivot. That's the pivot. You reference it, but then you move forward. You want all of your energy on what you want. We want yeah. all of our energy collectively on what we want, right? We want peace. We want harmony. We want love and beauty and joy and everything that's amazing. We want all that. So we need to focus on that type of stuff and be of course implementing that type of stuff in our everyday life. Yeah, I mean, that's what the frequency means. You're holding your frequency. Instead of focusing so much on the things that are out of our control we should focus a little bit more on the things that we can control within our own personal life and see what kind of change that can make. Of course. I mean, it's internal. This is a internal, uh, external reality. It has to be done internally, right? So it's like, where's your attention going? Does it match your intention? Does your attention match your intention, right? Mm -hmm. review like that. that does your attention match your intention 
Yeah, where's all your attention going? It's all about attention. Oh, because how strong would that intention manifest if you're not putting your attention to it? Exactly. Where's the intention? Mm. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's simple. It sounds simple. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. And, um, it's a good t-shirt. That's your intention. Valerie, are you feeling right now that there's a little bit of language coming through? I don't know. Do you? I, I feel something <laughs> building up. Do you have some language? <laughs> Maybe you have language. <laughs> oh. You ready? Yeah. Uh-oh. Hell yeah. I want to pass a baton. I'm ready to go lay on the beach all day. Okay. So Yanamaya Nash Nashnamora Sin Nashnya Monya Kona Shinya Sanushnyanya Sanushnyanya Sinashnya Onashinya Solo Sian Sanashyan Sian Ooh. Mm, I felt that. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> it takes a little courage sometimes. It does and space, right? I'm holding I'm holding space for that. Oh yeah. And that's a big piece. You know, a lot of us are space holders. That's not really understood unless you're actually doing it. You yeah. know, it's not somebody that has been valued in our modern society, but a lot of the, you know, feminine, that's a, pl a role that many of us have played is holding space and also holding a node, holding our frequency. It, it carries a lot of weight, right? I mean, it's why where, where I am in Southern California, I've been in this spot for many years. This is like my domain. I'm holding the field down here. And, and LA is a heavy field. Oh, <laughs> anyone yeah. who I've, anyone Ooh. who I've talked to is like, oh my God, you're in LA. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm L South LA, LA, New York, LA, I know, New York right now. Right? Uh, DC. Ooh, that's my. another biggie. Oh, yeah, DC, DC is huge because of what, what goes on what the flow of energy and so i'm sat i'm in the i'm at like the southernmost part of la <laughs> that i can be at the beach it's the only mm -hmm. way i could actually stay in this field is to be very far <laughs> out yeah, of it ocean. i'm right yeah ocean. i can see the ocean from my kitchen it's three blocks i have to be here in, in that space for me because otherwise when i drive like downtown la uh-uh i can feel it in my body when I when I drive there, it's like boom. It hits me hard. It's very dense. So, so where we are physically is important, um, you know, and what we're called to do. What we're called to do. So, I do get messages like, "Get rid of your stuff because you might be moving," you know. So, I'm caught, you know I'm on alert for several things. That's why staying super, super flexible and really going in and, and, you know, your own inner guidance is everything. Sure, you can have outside stuff. You know, I work with people, but ultimately it has to come from within, it has to be duplicated from within your own being, you know? So, and our roles are changing. I feel like my role's changing. I've been feeling that mm -hmm. for a while. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, this is also what's happening because the next group of awakened people are showing up. So it pushes everybody up to the next role, whatever that is. So, you know, roles are changing and just this is the flexibility of the following your feel and not getting too stuck in anything.
yeah. or with anyone or in any place. Because uh, <laughs> I was going to say that's an excellent reminder. Um, yeah. And that's why we have to kind of, and it may be hard, is, you know, allow these relationships and connections to flow as they are, you know. Yes. You may, I mean, you may even end up uh, parting ways with somebody, but you could end up just coming back together within like, you know, a few months or a year because you just yeah. had to work on some personal things individually. So exactly. it's best just to stay open um, yep. and just try to try to not take it so personal if something is decided or happens yeah and stay open to the possibilities that can still happen afterwards yeah exactly and that's being in that that flow state and surrender you know you got to be able to surrender into whatever's showing up um especially now you know I mean, we've always been there, but it just feels like surrender into what, you know, because if we're in timelines and you want to align to the highest timeline, you have to surrender to what might fall apart because of that. And I felt it earlier. Awesome. I was like, oh, I'm grieving. I was like <laughs> grieving something. And I do that. I pre-grieve. I, I feel the emotion but I don't know what it's about. It's not tied to something specific, but I did feel like I was pre grieving. I said, something's either leaving my field or something's coming in. There's a grief though, something that I'm releasing attached, right? To that. And I did lose a, a dear soul brother and short uh, beloved. We were beloveds for a short time, a few weeks ago, or well, it's was, it was not a few weeks ago. It was, on Martin Luther King, he passed over, uh, a, you know, definitely a way shower, definitely an ancient, um, powerful soul, but he passed over. And so, you know, <laughs> it's, there's power in that too. I said, oh, okay, you're just going to be counsel. You're just going to be on the other side. Great. You know, I grieved uh, as his physical body, but I knew now he's going to be free to be, he's going to be more effective, right? And counsel mm -hmm. on that side, yeah, holding so, that space. Yeah, and I just want to say, uh, I just want to say thank you to him. Thank you yeah. for uh, his mission. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I, I went to the land where he passed mm -hmm. and it was just, everything was so amazing. It was beautiful. It was very synchronistic. And, and now he's kind of holding the gate open for the new earth. He's holding He's on the other side doing it, right? So yeah. I feel we've got some big pieces that are going to show up in the physical. So that's exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Valerie, um, is there anything else that you'd like to share? If not, I would love to drop into a guided meditation if you're willing to guide us. Oh, crap. Sure. <laughs> uh, let's got do you it. Got on the spot. Yeah, you did. Okay, let's do it. Sure. Guided meditation. Let's All do right. a grounding one. This is what I've used before grounding. It's not it's 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 fairly short, but it's something that can happen whenever you feel, you know, ungrounded or before you're about ready to go into something, you know, a class or whatever. So let's start take some deep breaths. You can close your eyes if you want. And if you're seating, uh, seat, the, seated, you can have your feet on the floor since we're going to be doing grounding or connection to earth if you're on the sitting on the floor, either way. And you can have your hands in your palm, palm uh, with your palms up in your lap. <sighs> Funny, I'm seeing two different meditations. Let me see which one wants to come in. <laughs> Let's go with a grounding one. Just imagine an anchor, and there's an anchor um, at the root chakra, which is at the bottom of your spine. 
And that anchor is going to allow you to ground. And as you take a deep breath, imagine that anchor slowly going down into the floor, through the floor, into the earth, to the inner earth, through the magma, down into the center of the earth. And imagining now into the rocks and you can attach that anchor. I like to anchor into something dark, a dark rock, if you like specific ones. Obsidian is a really nice one. So just kind of anchor that in and feel that grounded presence. And as you breathe, you're kind of pulling up that energy from Earth, from Mother Earth. Pulling up that grounded cleansing frequency from the rocks. And you start to feel more refreshed. You can leave that anchor in if you'd like, if you're going to continue meditation. Or you can unhook it at your root chakra, but always knowing that it's there. And then you can easily step back into that space and reconnect that hook into the inner earth. So when you're ready, you can come back into the time and space of now and open your eyes. Move your body a little bit. So it is. And so it is. <laughs> That's my short grounding meditation. And I'm going to do some show and tell. This is a beautiful piece of rainbow obsidian. It's glass. It's from Northern California. A friend of mine mines it himself. It's very powerful. You can't really see the rainbow, but if you if put it in the light, you can see all the rainbows in it. Rainbow colors, rainbow obsidian. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, so I love to use this. I usually pick crystals that are flat so I can use them. I can hold them in my hands and use them in a session. Mm -hmm. I do physical sessions as well. Not as much. My, most of my sessions are remote. But... Okay. And then your sessions that you're talking about here. Um, now, you said you do remote sessions. That means like online, right? Yeah, most of my sessions are remote. I do some things in person here in Redondo. Um, I am feeling to open up more to bigger groups and ceremony. I have a new drum coming from Finland. One of Ooh. my clients. Yeah, I didn't know she made drums and drew and did art. So I have a new shamanic dragon drum on its way. <laughs> that <laughs> so sounds I'm, incredible. I'd love to hear some of the, the energy from that. And, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait. Um, also, yeah. What I was going to say is if, if any of those uh, connections that you have are interested in hopping on to share, you know, their stories and their resources yeah. as well, feel free to uh, connect them okay. and I would Will love do. to have them on. Okay. And, um, Wonderful. I just wanted to, to ask you about your, uh, your offerings. You can get, people can access and uh, ask for appointments through your website, correct? Yes. Um, I, have some information there. Uh, Square Up is my uh, appointment booking site. And so all of my sessions and exchange is on there. And then you can book directly through my calendar there. I do offer a 15 minute consult at no charge. So, you know, if anyone wants to just chat with me and get a chance to kind of see if there's a fit. Um, I do very high level work. A lot of people come to me. <laughs> I get a lot of referrals. 
um, if people are stuck and not able to function, especially with Star Family, mm -hmm. um, who have contracts or things with the Galactic. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of mediation uh, with individuals as well. <laughs> that's that's amazing work. Yeah, um, it great. is. I'm it very is. grateful that you're here. Um, <laughs> Thank you, honey. Likewise. Of course, of course. It is my pleasure. And um, <laughs> can they also uh, um, access uh, scheduling these offerings through ValerieEster.com? Yeah, my website. There's a link. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was ValerieEster.com. That is V A L E R I E. E I S T E R. Oh, it's, com. it's Elster, E L S T. Oh, E L. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. So E L S T E R. Yeah. ValerieEster.com. Yes. And that was <laughs> Valerie Esther, everybody, out of Thank Southern you, California, the wonderful Akashic <laughs> Oracle Galactic. Council Earth Guardian, thank you for joining us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you it's for been sharing fun. your energy and your sacred light. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. So did okay. The it is to be no ego, machismo with fuego. Kundalini is my payroll. Saucy like queso. Watch me whip with a wrist. No watch, only crystal bracelets. Yeah, we stay lit. Yeah, we stay lit.